Welcome back to my World History Online Lectures. Today we are continuing our discussion on the Renaissance, but focusing specifically on the art that the Italian Renaissance produced. So here are the questions I want you to be able to answer by the end of the video. The first is, how did Renaissance art differ from medieval art? The second, what are the main characteristics of Renaissance art? And the third is, how was humanism expressed through the arts of the Italian Renaissance? So you should be able to answer those three questions by the end of the video. So during the medieval era, art was exclusively produced for the sake of glorifying God or for church decoration and worship. There was really no need for art elsewhere in society because it wasn't highly valued or appreciated during this time period. Generally, art was painted by untrained monks who focused on biblical scenes, and they painted this in very rigid ways. And art was often repetitive and similar, and it starts to become what I call cookie-cutter art. However, as the Renaissance took root in European society, art becomes very significant because it represents a return to the world and producing art for the sake of art and for the sake of beauty. Now, Renaissance art still depicted religious and biblical themes, but in a much more realistic ways and with a lot more emotion that drew the viewer in. So the art became more relatable and more approachable. Also, Renaissance art really focused on expressing the artist's individual talents instead of only creating art for the sake of worship. Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of medieval and Renaissance art so you can better understand what I'm talking about. Here on the left is a piece of medieval art, and here on the right is a piece from the Renaissance. So just by glancing at these two images, you can see that there are huge differences between these eras of art. However, I think it's really interesting to note that these two images actually share the same subject matter. They're both depicting Mary and her son Jesus. So as I said before, medieval art, the one on the left, is very static and similar. Painters would paint the same image over and over and over and over again with very little variation. The figures were portrayed as otherworldly and divine, as you can see their prominent halo surrounding their head. And this often meant that these figures were above or better than the common man. So the style itself kind of lacks dimension, it's very dull, and in my opinion, Mary and Jesus look like zombies. But when we take a look at how Mary and Jesus were depicted during the Renaissance, we see definite variations. Renaissance artists take Mary and Jesus and make them look like everyday people, which makes the viewer able to relate more to the piece. The use of perspective and deep colors, along with shadowing, give the pieces a more realistic or earthly feeling. These Renaissance pieces highlight the talents of individual artists along with the subject they are painting. So when compared to the medieval art, Renaissance, tends, Renaissance art tends to be more beautiful, inspiring, and less zombie-like. Italian Renaissance artists use many new techniques that the art world had never seen before. Some of these characteristics included perspective, which allowed for a more 3D image. Almost all Renaissance pieces have some sort of foreground versus a background, which allowed the artist to explore more complex compositions. Artists also wanted to make the figures of their art more lifelike and realistic, so perfecting the human form and creating images with proper dimensions and proportions was very important during the Renaissance. Italian Renaissance artists were also very big on creating atmospheric pieces, and they did this by using various techniques to depict light and shadows with paint. When you look at da Vinci's famous Mona Lisa, you can note the haziness of the background and the blending tones of her skin. This creates dimension within the piece, which makes the image more visually appealing. Artists also wanted to express their humanistic ideas within their art, and this is going to become a major theme of the Italian Renaissance. On the next few slides, I'm going to show you how to look for the elements of humanism within a piece of art itself. We already know that the main ideas of the Renaissance were focused on this new philosophy called humanism, which emphasized the belief that humanity should be celebrated. So humanism itself can be broken down into three main elements seen in Italian Renaissance art. The first is individualism. People started to embrace the ideas that individuals were created by God with their own unique gifts and talents. Thus, variety, differences, and creativity were embraced rather than shunned. So the art of the Renaissance glorified 
potential and talents of not only artists, but also of everyday people. The second element is classicism. Italian Renaissance artists wanted to emulate the civilizations of classical antiquity, or Greece and Rome. So from Roman arches and columns, to Greek togas, and bits of mythology, it can all be seen in Renaissance art. Lastly, there's secularism, which focused on the ideas that people should enjoy their time on Earth, on the here and now, and its material pleasures, rather than focusing so much on the future and worrying about the afterlife. If you want to think about it another way, it was definitely the original YOLO. Now we are going to use Leonardo da Vinci's Madonna of the Carnation to show how art can reflect the elements of humanism. So the first element we're going to look for is individualism. You can see that Mary is painted as a real person and not a zombie. The emotional relationship she shares with her son Jesus is also clearly painted on her face as well as his with his outstretched arms. Also, the figures are both represented proportionally to each other, making the image more realistic. The second element is secularism. The use of perspective and the natural setting of the background combined with the worldly details of Mary's dress emphasize the real world here on earth setting. In a medieval piece, as shown earlier, Mary and Jesus were always portrayed as divine against a mystical gold background. This piece really highlights the human elements of Mary and Jesus. Mary is simply enjoying the single moment here on earth alone with her son. The last element is classicism. The background setting has clearly been influenced by Roman architecture with the use of columns and arches. Also, the painting itself is very symmetrical, something the ancients placed high emphasis on. The composition of the piece is arranged in a geometrical formation. The use of triangles is consistent throughout much of Italian Renaissance art as it pays homage to ancient Greeks who developed early geometry, and it also symbolizes the Holy Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As I said before, humanistic ideals can be seen all throughout Renaissance art, and tomorrow in class you're going to get your own chance to analyze humanism within the Italian Renaissance. So we'll be looking at pieces such as Botticelli's Birth of Venus, Raphael's School of Athens, and some of the most beautiful sculptures created by Michelangelo, such as his La Pieta and the Statue of David. That's the end of today's video. Make sure to take the quiz before tomorrow in class. You can scan the fancy QR code on the screen or there's also a link below. See you tomorrow.